This is me, Steve, and Sam at one of our favorite beaches. We came to play in the sand with our off-road vehicles, and we actually did quite a bit of that. But we also ended up helping other people whose vehicles were either dug in, stuck, or were just having traction problems. So in this video, we're going to give tips on how to do recoveries in the sand and on how to drive in the sand and not get stuck. So that's me and Steve at the far end of the beach. And as I said, we go to the beach just to have fun playing in the sand. And really what we do is just drive around looking for obstacles to have fun on. It can be a piece of driftwood, it can be a sand dune, it can be any feature that you find out on the beach. And because we're dorks, we could fully entertain ourselves doing that all day. However, in this case, before I even got to the beach, I got a call from Steve, and he was helping someone get up and over the exit ramp, which is a relatively steep hill of very soft and very deep sand. And here you see Steve giving Mel a tow over the hill. Mel probably could have made it, but he had his young family in the car and he didn't want to aggressively drive over the hill. That was a good call on his part. He was a great guy, great family, a ton of fun to meet, and coincidentally, he even knew our channel. Mel, Mel. Uh, nice to meet you guys. You I right? love your channel. Thanks a lot. After that, we aired down, and I'm not gonna talk a lot about airing down in this video. I've talked a lot about it in our other beach videos and also in our other snow videos. I will say that airing down is your number one traction device in the sand. And we'll give some examples of that later in the video, but first I wanna talk about the Red Jeep Gladiator. And then we'll talk about the extraction of this vehicle. Okay, the Gladiator. As you can see, he was having difficulty getting up the exit ramp. And this is a brand new vehicle to him, and I believe it's the first time he had it off-road. And by far the most common problem we see when people are having problems in the sand is that they have not turned off the factory traction control system. These systems hate wheel spin. They'll use either brakes or throttle to slow down and stop wheel spin. And maintaining momentum in the sand actually requires some wheel spin. So when you're in the sand, always turn off your factory traction control system. Now hats off to the driver of that red gladiator because he left the beach read his manual, saw how to turn off his factory traction control. He aired down and later in the day came back and we saw him going up and down that hill with no problem at all. And this is my new Overland puppy, Sydney, and you'll be seeing a lot of her in our videos. Okay, we headed down the beach and ran into these guys and they seemed really nice, so we offered to help get their truck out. All right, I'm John, my new friend. Robert. Robert, we're gonna help pull you out. Uh, I'm um, there's a lot of, I mean, his axles are down now. We can do that. It'd be a, a double strand. Sand and in snow, always dig before you pull. The sand sort of molds into the vehicle, and when you try to pull the vehicle, you're pulling cubic yards of sand with it, unless you dig. I think we're ready to give it a try. We're winching here instead of using a kinetic rope and doing a dynamic pull because the best recovery point was on the rear and going forward we would have been driving straight into the surf and going backwards with a kinetic pull we didn't have a lot of room either because as you can see here we would have been going up into the dune. We should uh, air his tires down for him before he departs. Yeah. Alright, so go ahead and straighten out your tires. Well, that was quite a job. When we started, he really was buried to the axles. Now we're gonna give him a pull up the exit ramp just to make sure he gets out. You'll see that I'm gonna equalize the recovery points. I do that when I'm not 100% sure whether or not they're a rated recovery point. Well, this was a fun group of people to meet and we completely enjoyed helping them. So, Robert, if you're watching this video, cheers to you and your family and hope we see you on the beach again sometime. Let's take a break from talking about recoveries for a minute. We'll get back to those. But while we're watching these clips of us just goofing around in the sand, I want to bring up the topic of 
whether or not you should use four wheel low or four wheel high in the sand. This topic comes up a lot and it's hotly debated online. For me, there's no one correct answer that fits every circumstance. Sand changes so quickly. You know, in one moment it can be hard and compact. In another moment it can be waterlogged and have no bottom. It can be thick and heavy or it can be soft like powdered sugar. So it really comes down to this. If you're on hard, compact, flat, sand four wheel high is probably fine but if you get into circumstances where your engine starts lugging then shift into four wheel low and take advantage of the additional torque that will be at your disposal especially if you're plowing through deep sand on any given beach i find myself shifting back and forth from four wheel high to four wheel, wheel low as the circumstances change okay so now steve and i are going to do our best to get sam stuck I feel like I'm driving like a big snow cat <laughs> on sand. It's a sand cat. It's probably weighs a thousand pounds less than uh, my dad's 400. Probably. <laughs> Jeep seems to be doing good. Oh man, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's so light. Yeah. I yeah. just everything just can just butter up it. Yeah. Gauntlet uh, or or whatever the challenge has been thrown. Find me something that you think I can get stuck in that you guys won't get stuck. Okay. In. Did you hear that? Yeah. So we head down the beach to see if we can get Sam stuck. Now this is one of our favorite things to do, but you'll notice there's a lot of people in the way, so tip number seven, slow down for people. We tried this log, but it turns out we could not get Sam stuck on this. In the end, the easiest, most benign, simple little obstacle is the one that he got stuck on. That always seems to be the case, but I still somehow hate it when that happens. And I should point out that every one of us in the group gets stuck. In fact, if you look at the last beach video, we had to winch a giant log out from under Steve's rig. And here's Sam getting stuck. That's a height, don't dig a hole. All right, hold me out. I will. I want to see what we're dealing with. <laughs> yep. The question is, is it more embarrassing to be recovered by a Toyota or by your father in a Toyota. <laughs> Maybe we have a screw loose or something, but getting stuck for us really is part of the fun, especially when the person that got stuck is someone other than you. So um, on a Jeep, the lowest point is definitely not the rock slider. No. The stock one anyway. Yeah, it's the transmission belly pan, cross member. It's not going to be a, a dynamic, it's just going to be a gentle pull. <laughs> Come on, Sydney. Ah, ah. Ah. Sounded good. <laughs> Sounded so bad. New topic is having a locking differential necessary in the sand. You know, there's this urban legend about a guy in a two-wheel drive pickup that properly airs down and that he can do anything and everything in the sand. And there's, there's a little bit of truth in that. For example, Sam's out in his Jeep and he does not have a locking diff and he's going anywhere and everywhere uh, that we are. And I have dual lockers on my rig. So for me, it's a yes and no. They can be helpful if you're going over very bumpy or scalloped sand where tires might lift they can keep momentum going they can sometimes help you get out of stuff when you're bogged in it but as you can see from sam's jeep they are not absolutely necessary okay i said we'd get back to the topic of airing down towards the end of the day we met two guys one in a black truck the other in a white truck and they were having trouble getting up the exit ramp they didn't need anything from us other than the air down tools so we helped them air down their tires and you'll see that having done that they went right up the hill. That's a pretty good example of how well airing down works in the sand. Here's how it played out. Well, you know, if you just use your tool there, air them down, he can get out by himself. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Right. 
Nicely done. That's what airing down your tires does. Hey, walked up that time, no problem. So that day, Steve helped one other person up the exit ramp. He just kind of acted as a pace car to show him the correct amount of momentum needed to get up the hill. And when it comes to driving in the sand, momentum really is the key to everything. You want to find that perfect balance between speed and control. If you have too much momentum, that will lead to a loss of control. If you don't have enough momentum, it'll lead to a loss of traction. All right, on a closing note, I'm looking for a great overlanding practical joke to play on my brother. If you got one, let me know. That's it guys, it's all good fun. Thanks for watching.